Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out the gaming performance of the all-new AMD Athlon 3000G APU. This is a fairly new budget offering from AMD, and they've released this to replace the older 200GE, 220, and 240GE. And this has a lot in common with the 200GE series, except we're fully unlocked on the CPU and GPU side with this $50 APU. So it's fully overclockable right out of the box. We have two cores, four threads at 3.5 gigahertz, built-in Radeon Vega 3 graphics at 1100 megahertz, and a TDP of 35 watts. All this coming in with a price tag of $50 USD. So in this video, we're gonna be testing out some PC gaming performance out of this little chip. Keep in mind, this has a built-in GPU, so we're not going to be using any external or dedicated GPU with this system. We're using the built-in Radeon Vega 3 graphics that come built into this chip. If you're interested in seeing some emulation performance out of this little APU, I have created a full video. I'll leave a link in the description. A lot of good stuff over there. I tested most of it with the stock clocks, but the higher end stuff did need to be overclocked. But in the end, it's a great emulation performer. Before we jump right into the testing, I just want to give you a quick overview of the test bed that I'm using here with the 3000G. As for the motherboard, I'm using a Gigabyte X470 Ultra Gaming, 16 gigabytes of Team Force Vulcan Z RAM at 3200 MHz. Power supply is an EVGA 550B3 fully modular, and I'm not going to be using the stock cooler that came with the 3000G because I do want to do some overclocking in this video because that's where this little chip shines. So I'll be using a stock AMD Wraith Stealth cooler. This cooler comes stock with the 22 or the 2400G. And for the operating system, Windows 10 Pro. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So before we get started here, I just want to give you a quick look. I have both cores overclocked to 4 GHz, uh, 3200 MHz on the RAM, and for the GPU, I'm overclocked to 1650 MHz. Like I mentioned, this chip is unlocked, and I highly recommend overclocking at least the GPU core. It's really easy to do from the BIOS. So the very first thing I did was run a Time Spy benchmark at the stock clocks on the CPU and the GPU and overclock. 4 GHz on both CPU cores and 1650 MHz on the GPU. Total score, stock right out of the box with 3200 MHz RAM, 491. Our graphics score was 437. CPU score was 1651. With the overclock, our overall score jumped up significantly to 659. Graphics score was 593. And CPU score, 1826. So overclocking this chip definitely helps out. In this video, all the gameplay you're about to see is with the overclock I've been talking about. But I did run some games with the stock clocks and the overclock. For Project Cars 2, low 720p, our average FPS on the stock clocks was 28 FPS. With the overclock, 37. Now that might not seem like a lot, but for a small chip like this, it's a 40% increase just from an overclock. Moving right into some gaming, we have CSGO, medium settings, 1080p. Keep in mind, all this gameplay is 50 overclock, 4 GHz on the CPU, and 1650 on the GPU. We're getting an average of 72 FPS here, which is outstanding for a little $50 APU. Now, if you need any more out of this, you could always drop the settings to low, or medium 720. And at medium 720, this does get over 100 FPS. Next on my list was the 2016 version of Doom. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Afterburners to display over this. I'm using the Vulcan backend, 720p, low settings. We're getting an average of around 55 FPS, and in my opinion, this is fully playable. Next up, we have Rocket League at 720p, performance settings, over 90 FPS on average. And taking this up to 1080p on the performance setting, 68 FPS average. So it's fully playable at 1080p, but I wanted to see how far we could push it at 720.
Skyrim Special Edition, low 720p. I was really hoping we could push it over 60 FPS like this, but we're getting an average of 54, which really isn't that bad. As for GTA 5, it's just a little too much for this combination, even at 720p with V-Sync completely off. As you can see, we're getting a lot of stutters here. Our CPU is totally maxed out at 100%. So I wanted to try to enable V-Sync with 720p, and it's still just a little too much. I mean, we have that CPU pegged out. So in my opinion, the best way to play GTA 5 on this APU is 1080p with V-Sync set to half. I completely understand that this isn't 60 FPS, but you gotta remember, this is a $50 APU. We're on a tight budget here. And finally, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, low settings, 720p. Yes, there are some settings that you can mess around with in the config file to get this running a lot better on this APU, but out of the box, with the stock settings at low, 720p, we're getting an average of around 20 FPS. And just to give you an idea of how well this performs with the overclock versus stock, I tested four more games. So in the end, the Athlon 3000G is far from a high-end CPU, but if you're on a tight budget, I really do like this setup. I also did a full video on emulation and it kills it even at the stock clocks. In that video I also did the overclock for the higher end stuff, but overall this is a great performing APU at the price. So that's pretty much it for this video guys, I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions let me know in the comments below, I also have that emulation video listed down there if you want to check it out. But like always, thanks for watching.